Hi, boys and girls. Well, by the time you watch this, we will be back to ESY summer distance learning. Um, but right now, I am recording these videos over the summer break. So I just wanted to apologize because it is super hot today and I have three fans going. I've got one behind me, one over here, and one over there because my little apartment has no air conditioner. So I'm sure you can already hear it, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that that's what that weird noise is in the background. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to another episode of Reading with Miss JC. Uh, so we are going to start out this week, we're going to read a series of three different classic children's picture books. Um, we're going to start with today with uh, Dinosaur Bob and his adventures with the family Lizardo by William Joyce, one of my personal favorites. Um, then on uh, Tuesday, we're going to move on to Caps for Sale, then we're going to do Grandfather's Journey, and then on Thursday, we will do We Are Water Protectors. It's a beautiful Caldecott winner. And then on Friday, since the following Monday, we'll be back on campus. We're going to do Back to School with Mr. Men Little Miss. It's the, the Mr. Men series collection. It's pretty cute. So, all right, let's get started with Dinosaur Bob. Here we go. Dinosaur Bob and His Adventures with the Family Lizardo by William Joyce. Every year, before the start of baseball season, the Lazardo family took a trip far from their home in Pimlico Hills. One afternoon, while on safari in Africa, young Scotty Lazardo wandered away from camp. He returned with a dinosaur. Look what I caught, he said. Can we keep him? pleaded Scotty's sisters, Zelda and Velma. I don't see why not, said Dr. Lazardo. He looks kind of like my Uncle Bob, said Mrs. Lazardo. Jumbu, their bodyguard, said nothing. Scotty patted the dinosaur on the nose. Bob, he tried. The dinosaur smiled and wagged his giant tail. So they named him Bob. With Bob along, safari life was fun. Swimming in the mornings, games of baseball in the afternoons, and songs by the campfire before bed. When it came time to start for home, the Lazardos couldn't stand the thought of leaving Bob behind. Would you like to come home with us, Bob? Asked Dr. Lazardo. We'd love to have you, said Mrs. Lazardo. You could play baseball for our home team, the Pimlico Pirates, cried Scotty, Zelda, and Velma. Bob smiled again and wagged his giant tail. The journey back was grand. When the safari came to the banks of the River Nile, Dr. Lazardo said, let's go sailing. So they made Bob into a ship and steered him down the river. But they couldn't sail Bob all the way home to Pimlico Hills. So Dr. Lazardo booked passage on a luxury liner. Bob took us down the Nile in style reasoned the doctor, it would be bad manners if we didn't return the favor. It was a wonderful voyage. Passengers danced the conga up and down Bob's back while he played his trumpet, a gift from the ship's orchestra. Every evening, the children led Bob up to his berth in the ship's smokestacks and brought him a little bedtime snack, two peanut butter and bologna sandwiches and 400 double Dutch chocolate cakes. When the ship reached New York City, the Lazardos visited Central Park. After a light snack of 750 hot dogs, they caught a train to Pimlico Hills. It was Bob's first train ride. Reporters flocked to the Lazardo home in Pimlico Hills. Bob will scare off burglars, Dr. Lazardo told them. And he can blow a mean trumpet, said Zelda. He can dance too, said Velma and Mrs. Lazardo at the same time. And can play and can he play baseball, shouted Scotty. Jumubu said nothing. Jumbu said nothing. The photographer's cameras flashed. 
lengthy lizard lands with lizardos read the headline in the paper bob was famous the next day bob and the lizardos played some baseball in the backyard bob was terrific he could play right and left field at the same time the pimlico pirates watched bob play the pirates had never won a game they were the worst team in history but everyone in town loved them and went to all their games. I wish the big guy in green could play for us, said one of the pirates. The following morning, Bob saw some neighborhood dogs chasing cars. He decided to join them. He was stopped by a policeman. Aren't you the Lazardo's dinosaur? Bob nodded. He was arrested for disturbing the peace. Bob enjoyed being fingerprinted. He didn't understand he was in trouble. The Lazardos rushed to get Bob out of prison, but the chief of police wouldn't let him go. I'm sorry, the chief explained. We can't have dinosaurs running wild in the streets. We'll be sending him back to Africa in the morning. Bob let out a sad howl. So did the Lazardos. Everyone, even the policemen, began to cry. That night, no one at the Lazardo's house could sleep. Poor Bob, sighed Scotty. All alone, said Belma. Without his trumpet, said Zelda. Suddenly, Dr. Lazardo jumped up, grabbed his hat, and ran out the door. Don't worry, said Mrs. Lazardo. Your father never goes out in his pajamas unless he has a smashing idea. Soon, the doctor returned with the Pimlico Pirates. Come on, he whispered, and be very quiet. I think I know how to save Bob. Bob's escape made headlines the following morning. Lizardos and lizard on the lamb. Cops confused. The people of Pimlico Hills weren't worried. They were too busy thinking about the pirates opening game. The whole town was going that afternoon, even the chief of police. As the stadium filled, no one noticed a large bump in the outfield. The team began to run out into the baseball diamond as the announcer called their names. When the last of the team was called, the announcer shouted, and now the newest Pimlico pirate, Dinosaur Bob. The bump began to move. There stood Bob. The crowd roared. So did the chief of police. Bob smiled his big dinosaur grin and the game began. The game was close. The Lazardos cheered Bob from the dugout and gave him water in between innings. The Pirates were playing better than they ever had. They needed just one run to win the game when Dinosaur Bob stepped up to bat. He swung with all his might. Crack! The ball went up and up, clear out of the stadium and out of sight. Bob rounded the bases in three great strides and touched his nose to home plate. The Pimlico Pirates had won the game. The Lazardos rushed into the field and hugged Bob, and the crowd cheered Bob all the way to the Lazardos' house. The chief of police cheered the loudest. Bob was a hero. That evening, Bob and the Lazardos celebrated by having a cookout in the backyard. After dinner, Jumbu brought out the musical instruments, Scotty on bongos, Bob on trumpet, and everyone else on kazoos. Here's to Bob, said Dr. and Mrs. Lazardo. The best ball player, said Velma. The best pal, said Zelda. And the best dinosaur a family ever had, shouted Scotty. Jumbu smiled, and they all sang and danced late into the summer night. I read this book over and over again. I wanted a Bob the Dinosaur so bad. He was so cute. Uh, all right, well, I hope you guys like that story and stick around for tomorrow because we are gonna keep reading some beautiful children's classics. All right, guys, have a great afternoon and I'll see you soon.